Hi, this is Sadhu Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us Leslie Salazar, your senior technical writer at Linode. So Leslie, first of all, welcome to the show. When I look at Linode, it has been evolving. It has kind of becoming an alternate cloud provider against the big players, mega scale players like AWS or Azure or GCP. Uh, and now you're also offering a lot of services. You're offering storage, you're offering GPU and also <laughs> Kubernetes. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to understand from your perspective that when and why you decided to kind of offer Kubernetes uh, for Linode users? Yeah, so like you said, we are an alternative cloud provider. And in my mind, what that really means is we provide these basic core primitive primitives that anyone needs um, with the goal of making cloud computing accessible to as many people as possible. So we have the core primitives like volumes, load balancers, your Linode instances, and it just makes sense that you can then also provide a service that is a managed Kubernetes service that very often needs these core primitives to run. So they need an external volume, they need a load balancer, um, they need object storage, and we have all those things. So it's kind of a logical next step to then provide this managed service that so many people need and want to use and to do it in a way that's actually really affordable and really simple. I think Linode started with offering a beta uh, to its users. So can you talk a bit about what kind of use cases of you know, LKE that you saw during the beta phase? Yeah, the beta was really interesting, really exciting because we were really able to engage with the users who were excited to kind of kick the tires of our managed Kubernetes service, LKE. Um, and there were so many, such a variety of use cases, you know, the ecosystem is, you know, starting to really mature. Uh, but for me, the really interesting ones are ones that, you know, your team might benefit from today by deploying. So of course you could, you know, do something like, um, you know, uh, deploy a ghost CMS blog. And that's really cool if you know you're you already have that and you're already using that. But let's say you have a team of developers. What's something that you could deploy on LKE that would be useful to you today and is also a way for you to become much more familiar with the way Kubernetes does things? So one of those is um, a private Docker registry. And that's a really cool example because you're really going to engage with several of the ways that you work with Kubernetes, for example, you could use Helm charts to, um, to download some of um, the, the software that you need. Um, so for example, um, you might, you will also use an uh, Nginx ingress. And that's something that um, is kind of a basic concept in uh, Kubernetes land, and something that you want to learn about. And so that's the uh, deploying a uh, private Docker registry would give that to you. Um, another thing that you would do there is um, create a uh, SSL and TLS certificate using Cert Manager. Um, so this, so that one use case, you're really touching upon a lot of things. And then of course, your team would be very excited to have a Docker registry um, to work with their containers. Um, another really cool one is Jenkins X. Um, and Jenkins X is really cool because, um, you know, of course, if you're not familiar with what Jenkins is, it's um, it automates C, I, and C, D deployments. But what Jenkins did is they uh, rebuilt Jenkins from the ground up and they wrote it in Go and it is made specifically to be deployed on a Kubernetes cluster and then to deploy to Kubernetes clusters. So that's a really great way to really um, kind of interact with uh, the way things are being architected to work on Kubernetes. And then another um, kind of just fun one that your team could use that we saw some people um, were uh, looking to interact with is Mattermost, which is um, basically a self-hosted messaging platform that's an alternative to Slack. So those are some cool use cases that I think people could um, get a lot out of um, deploying on a Kubernetes cluster today. As you kind of saw these use cases, did you also see uh, some of the challenges that you, uh, these users were facing, um, which also helped, or they provided some kind of feedback uh, that kind of you know also helped your team, uh, which is you know documentation and you know, resource team that helps the community to identify some of those key areas and create resources that can help the, the community and the ecosystem? 
you know, there are some really uh, basic roadblocks sometimes just around terminology, just because there's a very um, Kubernetes centric way uh, of doing things. Um, and it's interesting because they, there might be concepts that people are already familiar with in a certain way, but then because there is new terminology around it, it becomes a little bit of a stumbling block. Um, so we try to generate docs that address those things where we can contextualize things for you and explain things in a familiar way. So for example, if you think about in ingress control or like a reverse proxy in a way, you might have a better way, uh, a better entry point into it. You know, of course there's more to it, but uh, we can kind of say things like that and then provide like helpful resources and links to the user so that they can get a better handle on these certain concepts. Um, so that's kind of the way we uh, look to uh, author our guides uh, for, for things like Kubernetes, which can sometimes seem a little bit challenging to people. And how much of this resources or documentation, you know, work that you're doing is internal to Linode versus how much, you know, contribution you take from outside? Uh, is there any platform or program that, you know, tech, either technical writers or developers can also get involved with to, to create these uh, resources? The way that I'll kind of talk about this is that um, Kubernetes is such a vast topic. And while there are really cool generalized um, use cases like I just talked about before, you know, and we definitely are writing about this and want to write about more similar things, there are also um, kind of more specific um, topics that the community would benefit from. And here's where um, our Write for Linode program is a really good way for us to be able to provide that to users. So with Write for Linode, subject matter experts from the Linux community can contribute guides, tutorials, uh, conceptual guides about Kubernetes um, because they have probably already encountered certain difficulties um, or they have really cool experiences around using Kubernetes and they want to share that with the community. With Write for Linode, they have a really great platform where they can do that and, and uh, I guess engage with users. And what's really cool is you know, we have so many ways of receiving feedback from our users. You know, the docs, we have um, a comment section that we look at every single day. Um, so if you really want to kind of have that live and active engagement with the community and you have a lot to say about Kubernetes best practices, et cetera, then Write for Linode is a really interesting way for you to be able to do that. Can you tell us just a bit more about uh, Write for Linode program? So Write for Linode, uh, you can submit an application to contribute any topic to our documentation library. So right now we're talking specifically about Kubernetes and we're really interested in um, having users or having um, community members contribute uh, guides and tutorials about Kubernetes. Uh, but there are a vast array of topics that we're interested in, you know, all related to open source and Linux. Um, so you can visit our website, lino.com, and there you can navigate to our um, Write for Linode page and kind of learn a little bit more about how you can become involved with that program. And then you'll be interfacing a lot with us, the technical writers, um, the editors, and we will kind of help you get that out there in the best package possible. I will go back to LK. It's in beta phase. Uh, do you have any uh, kind of roadmap for it's going GA? And uh, as it's nearing GA, uh, what kind of kind of goals you, your documentation team have so that you are ready to help the community as the LKA hits uh, GA? Yes, yeah, so GA is definitely coming and the best way to get the latest information about that is to visit our blog. Um, we will be announcing there um, dates and things like that. Um, and, um, you know, we really, as the documentation team and Linode as a whole, we really, really care about our users and we want to provide the best support that we can. And we know that one of the ways that we can do that um, is by providing really great documentation, by um, creating examples that people can really use to learn more about Kubernetes and the way you do things on Kubernetes. Um, and then kind of intersecting, like I said before, with the Write for Linode program, then talking about these really specific cases um, that where you are actually kind of just looking for a recipe 
and a resource to go and do X, Y, Z on uh, Kubernetes. Thank you, Leslie, for, for explaining, you know, how the documentation team work. And also those use cases were really interesting. Uh, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again once the, it's, it's in GA. And uh, because the documentation people don't understand, it plays a very critical role in, 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 in adoption of any uh, technology. Uh, so thank you for your time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.